So we've learned to use a linear model to determine significance and make predictions. But what if you have more than one predictor variable? For instance, let's say you want to measure the effect of not just weight, but also the number of cylinders and the volume, or displacement, of the engine. We can get a sense of this trend by adding these two predictors to our visualization using color and size. So in this case, we would do ggplot our data, AES for aesthetics, on the x-axis we put weight, on the y-axis we put miles per gallon, and then we add color, cylinder, and we add the uh, size is the displacement variable. We see here being the, uh, the volume, the number of cylinders. We add it as a scatter plot. So already the, the effect of these three variables, the miles per gallon, is kind of difficult to determine. It's true that the cars with higher volume or larger points have a lower fuel efficiency, but they also have a higher weight. These two predictors might be redundant, or as statisticians say, confounded, for predicting the fuel efficiency. The same is true of the number of cylinders. More cylinders, or lighter blue, means both a higher weight and a lower gas mileage. So what combination of predictors will best predict fuel efficiency? Which predictors increase our accuracy by a statistically significant amount? We might be able to guess at some of the trends from the graph, but really we want to perform a statistical test to determine which predictors are significant and determine the ideal formula for prediction. We can do that with this with a multiple linear regression. We provide multiple terms in the right side of the linear regression formula. So here we see LM Let's say multiple fit equals LM of miles per gallon explained by weight plus displacement plus the number of cylinders. Give it the data we're using, MT cars. Now let's summarize this fit. Notice that the coefficients table now is four rows, one for the intercept and one for all three of our predictors. Each of these still contains a, uh, an estimate of its coefficient, or slope, it's negative for weight and for cylinder. It also contains a, a, a measurement of the p-value for each of these independently. So notice the p-values for the weight and the number of cylinders are significant. You can see the significance rating based on this, these number of stars here represent it's in between 0 0.001 and 0 0.01. But the significance for the displacement is not significant. That means that, it's, that means that the volume of the engine is redundant with one or both of the other predictors, so it provides no additional information. So just like we did before, we can extract the coefficients table using the COEF functions. We'll do that as m co for multiple coefficients equals coef of summary of m fit. Once again, we can extract each of the estimates by getting the first column of this. It's m co bracket comma one, first column, these are four estimates. How, how much the marginal effect of increasing your weight increasing your, your, the volume of the engine or increasing the, uh, the number of cylinders would affect the miles per gallon. We can also get the significance of each, the p-value of each, in the fourth column of this matrix. It's the p-values that are significant for the intercept, the weight, and the cylinders, but not significant for the volume of the engine. We can also predict the gas mileage of each car based on this model. For instance, doing predict of M fit. These are our new predictions based on the model. Or we can do it for a new car. All we have to do is, is give it the values of weight, displacement, and number of cylinders that we were using as predictors. So in that case, we do new car equals create a data frame, data dot frame equals weight, say 4,500, 4.5, displacement uh, volume of 300 cubic inches, and the number of cylinders, 8. Now we have this data, data table data frame. We can predict it with predict m, t, m fit new car. We produce a prediction based on this hypothetical new car.